Hello everyone, this is the Code Master here again. Um, today I'm going to be starting um, another episode of the tutorial series for No Limits. Um, many of you have been asking things like, how do I do custom support? Um, so I thought I'd show you how to do custom supports on a steel roller coaster. Now if you can hear a fan in the background, I'm really sorry. Um, you probably won't be able to though, it's just really warm in here because it's California and it's almost summer anyway. Let's get into this, so I'm going to start this, just going to call custom supporting, yay, there we go, and now let's set the style, hmm, ah, uh, let's see, what's a good one to sh showcase custom support? I think we should do a Eurofighter, because with Eurofighters there's a bunch of complicated support types, which I could show you how to do with these. Okay, so we're going to create a Gerslauer Eurofighter. Um, these are compact rides, with usually with a vertical lift and a beyond vertical drop. So let me just create a layout here. Also, I haven't really shown you how to create vertical lifts and things, so I guess this is um, kind of a mini tutorial in that sense. So let's just, just get started. So we can do our usual thing, create the station, just like that. Now, Gerslauer Eurofighters have very short trains. Usually only two to four cars, um, as you can see on Saw the Ride or Smiler. So we're going to put two stations, one unload and one load station. So we're going to place three type separators, about equal distance apart, and set them both to be station. And you'll see the cars will come into view. Now we want to click on the second station and check this unloading on unload on unloading only. And what this will do is it will make it so it will stop here, open its restraints, and when it's done unloading, it will move to this station. We also, what we want to do is we want to change the wait time to around 20 to 30 seconds. I'm just going to set it to, the average is going to be 25, um, the minimum is going to be 20, and the maximum is going to be 30, and the deviation is 5 seconds. Now let's just go to Coastal Properties and increase the trains to about, say, 3. There we go. And we'll get onto that third train later. So we're going to start off this ride with maybe a little turn to the right. Right. There we go. Just a small little turn. Not that big. Because Eurofighters are very good at handling tight curves. And in fact, the Gerstar Eurofighter is my favourite coaster style. Which is a nice fact. Anyway. We're going to get this lift started by creating a small straight segment before it because usually there's a brake run before the lift so we want to kind of go on to a side on view of where the lift will be and we kind of want to do it like what we would do with a turn just like that and you'll see until it goes vertical and then let's bring it up how high we want it i'm going to make it about 90 feet tall and then we do the same thing as we would with a curve again That, actually, that's quite awful shaping. Let me just fix that. And make sure, you, just like you do with curves, make sure you set um, the strict vertices to make it straight. Like we do with stations and everything. So this perfect up, and then maybe we could go at the top and depump these two vertices. Actually, we don't have enough left. Just make sure it's kind of a perfect circle almost. You can see we've got our vertical lift done. Now, Gersar Eurofighters also have a beyond vertical drop, meaning that it will kind of curve in on itself like this. So, what you what kind of want to do is you want to place a few roll vertices at the top and at the bottom of the lift, so this thing doesn't roll too much when we do this drop. Then you want to make a curve, kind of like you would going straight down. And then you're going to take another one, you're going to take it a little bit further in than the drop, so it kind of curves in. Then you're going to go vertical again. And then you're going to kind of make a big curve out, just like the pullouts on our B&M coasters and things we've done in the past. And then, of course, you want to depump all that because you don't want any pumps. You want it to be a nice, smooth ride because SLCs are painful, and everyone knows that. And as, if you don't know what an SLC is, it's basically a Vacoma's inverted coaster, and they are very, very painful to ride. So what we're going to do is, because usually Gerstler Eurofighters only have the two tube track on the lift, I'm going to place a type separator, and we're going to double click. And you'll see we have this spine type operation. 
or you can change this from two tube to three tube like that and you'll see the track model has changed now I'm just going to go ahead and depump this again because I don't think we depumped at the top this time there we go um, it's a rather steep drop but I think that should do actually I might as well go ahead and make that like that actually no because that's caused a lot of issue let's just go into um, perspective mode and take a fly around and see what we've done so far so we've created this nice little drop we'll be doing a box structure on there to showcase that ah so it looks like the drop has slightly come out of place this shouldn't happen to you I'm just gonna fix this myself because it's see that's just happened to me if it does come out of line just select the whole thing and then go to track and then make straight oh no mind that doesn't work just try and move them into position so it's nice and straight now you'll see that there's a lot of g-force coming off this because it's whipping off at quite an angle so we're just going to go ahead and create the lift now I'm going to add that break in before the lift that now on this break we want to set a weight for about five seconds the train being right on the end almost we're going to set the wait time to 5 seconds and enable transport like that. And of course, we've got to set this to lift. There we go. So now that's done, let's get on to the next element, which I'm just going to make into a. Let's see, what element have we not covered yet? Uh, what about I do maybe a small airtime pop or something like that? Actually, let's do a um, Immelman, because I like Immelmans. So we're just going to do what we did on the B&M one, or we did the dive loop except for in reverse. So we kind of create a half loop element. We want to make sure that it's almost kind of roundish because Gerslauer make their loops a bit more round than B&M do. We want to put some roll vertices to stop that roll. And then we're going to kind of mark the exit of the um, element like this. So I'm going to make a curve off to this side. Actually, I'm going to curve off that side. Like that. So now we have a kind of Immelman slash reverse dive loop depending on what you guys prefer. I'm going to make it so it kind of goes down to the ground. Like that. So we're just going to place those roll vertices in and get rid of all that lateral G and make sure it's rolled properly. So up here we just want to place well it's up completely upside down like that. And there you go. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of that one. There you go. So we have an Immelman slash reverse dive loop, depending on what you want to call it. Now let's depump this part of the ride so it doesn't get all horrible and start eating us to death with pain and torture. Anyway, there we go. Looks like it's clipping into the ground slightly. I'm just going to modify the terrain a little bit so that doesn't happen. There we go. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do an overbanks turn next. Actually, um, this is starting to look a little too much like the Abyss. Oh well. The Abyss is a ride in Australia and it's similar to this anyway. I'm going to do an overbank turn maybe around here. Or actually an inclined turn because those are we haven't done one of those. An inclined turn is basically where it goes up really steep banks at a really high angle and then it dives back down at also a very high angle. You can see this example on Saw the Ride and the Abyss. One is at Thought Park, that saw the ride. Um, you may not see many videos from me in the upcoming weeks as I will be away in Greece and I will be having a wonderful time there. So I'll probably have a few videos lined up just to release, so don't be worried. I'll, I haven't died or anything, I'll just be away for a while. You can see it's going to kind of come up there, high angle, and dive back down like that. Just get rid of some of this lateral G. Hmm. It's turned into a stall turn. How tall is that next to the next other element? Uh, not that tall. Increase that lateral G. So we can raise into an actual dive element. 
Yeah, that looks really weird right now. I don't know what's happened there. There we go. That looks slightly better. You can see it kind of goes up and then it kind of starts to descend down. Gotta smooth out these elements. Remember, nobody wants to be an SLC. Unless you're an SLC fan. Anyway, so there we go. We've got a nice dive loop there. I'll be going over how to support all these kind of elements because the SLU fighters are actually the perfect example. You've got a lot of beyond vertical drops, um, inversions. Let's see. Need to drop that down a little bit more so it's more of an overbank. Uh, this is something I don't like about the G-Force comb, it gets in the way sometimes. Just switch to spine for now. There we go, so it kind of comes down. And the rider's like, oh my god, what's happening? What about we do a um, kind of mini hop of airtime there? And then we'll get into... Yeah, this is probably going to end up being a longer episode, so I don't know how long it's been running for now. I could probably check. Wow, that is some weird shaping I've done there. What kind of radius comb is that? Kind of odd. Either way, it looks kind of cool. Well, that's just an overbank turn, I guess. So we're going to have a little pop of airtime, then we're going to have a curve into a brake run. Okay, I think I'm making this a little bit too much like Saw slash The Abyss. So, oh, whatever. Just supporting tutorial. So we've got a little pop of airtime there. And then let's bring it up into the station. Oh, not the station. Mid-course brake run. Just like we did on the B&M one. There you can see, so we, we're going to bring it up like that. Bit more curvy than the B and M one. I recommend you watch the previous tutorials if you're new to this series. Also, if you're new to this series, hello and welcome. Please subscribe. Just kidding. You don't have to subscribe, but I would recommend you do because if you don't, you'll miss out on a lot of awesome content. Anyway, let's get let's get this um, curve done. You never really want the G forces to go into the red zone or really the orange zone. Yellow is fine, but orange is kind of where your brain starts to go, oh, what's happening? All the blood's going, and then you bl black out. Uh, nobody likes to black out. Hmm. Anyway, got that. Build the mid-course brake run. Okay, I'm determined to make this even just slightly different. I'm not going to add a dive loop. What could I add? I would ask you guys, but then I remembered that you guys aren't listening to this yet. I'm just talking to a screen, and hopefully you guys will actually watch this video. Otherwise, I'll look like a soci total sociopath because I'm just talking to a monitor. Anyway, besides the point where it starts to get creepy, let's just get back to this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and create a... see, what element could I create? That needs to be higher, I just know that. How's that? Nice big sweeping curve. What about a drop and then I don't I don't even know. Maybe it's just I've been what I don't know, just everything I create starts to look like another ride. It's odd anyway. This is just for supporting tutorial anyway, so let's make it come down. Maybe do a helix, a barrel roll, and then into a brake run. How about that? So let's go, Wee, we're going to, no, not like that, we're going to plunge down here. Maybe do a corkscrew and then into the station, into the brakes. Yeah, I'll just do that. Nice and simple. Let's extend this out so we can have a nice brake run. Make sure the stations don't get screwed up when you're doing that. And I've got a message on the scene. 
forgot to mute Steam, so if you have Steam users, please don't rage at me for that. I forgot to mute Steam. I'll be doing that in a minute. Anyway. Like, I'll probably do, edit that off anyway, so you probably won't even see that. But if I haven't, then... Oh, well. <sighs> okay, let's see. Let's make it come down like that. Oh, yeah, we've got to set the um, style setting again for 3 tube track because it all went, ah, oh, no, what's happening? And then it got scared. So let's just get that roll, and then we'll do the same kind of corkscrew we did on the B&M. Except we kind of want to make it a little more rounded. So I'm going to kind of do it about that big, I think. Is that too small? Yeah, that's way too small. Actually, I'm going to do a hill and then a corkscrew. So it's going to be like that. There we go. It's going to be a little... Ah! Oh my gosh, I'm wait this moment. And then it's going to be a whoa! We're going upside down moment. There we go. Lots of weightlessness for our wonderful riders. Which don't exist because it... Well, never mind. <laughs> Let's just get back to this. There we go. Raise it up like we do normally. There you go. And then the middle one is just slightly higher. It's going to be kind of like a flat spin more than a corkscrew. Flat spin is basically a corkscrew that's very flat. A wing over is like a very drawn out corkscrew. Oh, I know why everything's kind of shaped odd. I forgot to set the um, heart line. I'm going to set it to one meter. There we go. Let's check our speed and make sure we don't run out. Oh, we ran out of speed there, so we have to increase the size of this. Yeah, I forgot to do that, guys. Always remember, if you want to have a heartline coaster, set the heartline at the beginning. Otherwise, you'll run into issues like this, and you'll rip your hair out with frustration. And I love your hair, and I don't want it to go. Well, I don't know what your hair looks like. If you're bored, I'm sorry, but never mind. Let's get off this. Okay, here we go. Just smooth that out again. That's a really steep drop. I like that. That is really steep. How are the G-forces though? Don't want it to be uncomfortable. Ah, uh, that's fine. Negative 1.3, jeez. Okay, so that's going to be our heartline thing. So that's nice and heartlined. Got this cool corkscrew. What we've got to do is add some roll vertices onto it so we don't annihilate the brains of the riders so by lateral g-force anyway get this on that there like that and connect and we have this awful thing here which i don't know why it happens i'll connect that there that'll work. there we go now we won't have that awful thing drawing it Yeah, this is a rather short ride because I need to kind of make it short. This has probably gone long, 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 long over the time. Like, I have no idea how long this video is right now. Because Fraps doesn't let me check. Oh yeah, about that, anyway. Let's see, get that three tube in there. Like that. And I think that's done. Let's save that before we forget to and scream at ourselves for forgetting. Anyway. Smooth this whole thing out now. That's the last thing is if you see any kind of parts where there's rough G forces, just smooth it out. There we go. Yeah, I think because of that heartline thing, it generated a few problems. So I'm going to probably have to just quickly fix those. You can see our drop became drastically steeper, which is kind of a bad thing in places. You can see that the G forces on the riders have definitely become way more intense. I'm just going to fix that by moving a few points around and then depumping that. There we go. Just about goes into the orange, but that should be okay. So now onto the part of the episode, which I hopefully I let remember to leave a link for those to, of you who wish to skip to just the supporting um which I forgot to do at the beginning of the video, maybe, but anyway. 
This is the part where I start to support. I'm just gonna finish depumping some things so it's not too intense. Trying to remember to set, make sure. Gonna make sure we have some way to get off this. There we go. Gonna rocket through that corkscrew at some speed. Let's get rid of that lateral G. There we go. You want? Let's just take a quick freeze at this and see how it looks. I'm gonna get some LSM on there so it doesn't look like it's directly gonna crash into a brick wall and kill everyone. Brick wall being the station. Okay, let's freeze this and see how it turned out. Oh, the track's clipping down there, but anyway. Gotta test a layout before you start to support it. That's important, because you might be able to lay out which doesn't work and you'll, again, get sad at yourself and you're like, no! Okay. Oh, it's night time. Why is it night time? Oh yeah! Hold on a second, I just need to change something. There we go, it should be daytime now. Hooray! Okay, there we go. I saw guess our Eurofighter, you can see the trains are very small, nice and compact, and it roll, rolls up to the lift, waits there, five seconds, and then it carries it up. Now, I might have made the um, crest a little too small, but, you know, this is just for supporting purposes. It goes down there. Goes over the dive loop, or the reverse dive loop, and then you have that diving element. Little pop of airtime there. You come up here, the course break run. Another little pop of airtime, kind of corkscrewy kind of element. That's the end. Yeah, I should probably make that break run longer. Make sure it has distance to stop. Like, quite a lot of distance to stop, because stopping is probably one of the most important parts of the ride. And, as you may know, stopping is rather important, because riders don't want to be trapped on it forever. Anyway, off the sad topics of riders being trapped on roller coasters forever, and on to the happy topic of supporting! So, we're going to start off with rather basic supports, for just, like, turns and things. And to make this easier, I'm just going to turn this into a tunnel. I'm going to turn it to heat or tunnel, there we go. And this onto a three tube, there we go. So the fir so first of all you want to switch to spline mode, because it makes it less laggy for supporting. So we're going to make some supports, like an A-frame support. So all we have to do is go to support and click add rail connector. Now, what you do, we're going to go into top view, and I want to create a support right about here. So you place down a rail connector and you'll see it has created this node on the track which we can drag around. Now this silvery goldy, thi or goldy thing at the end is basically a connector where you can put a beam. Now the beams can be defined in the supports panel and you, right now the size is 16 inch or 16, I think that's 16 inches, yeah. So now what you've got to do is you've got to place connectors to the ground. So I'm going to place one here and here so it's kind of like a a frame, see, so it will connect there and there. I'm just going to move that in a little closer. So all you have to do is click add beam, click and drag from that gold point to the gold point on the footer, and then we're going to take a beam node. Now a beam node is basically a node that attaches onto the side of a beam like this. So you can drag it up and down the beam so it basically will connect one support to another. So we're going to take this and go from that purple point and go to the gold point there. Next we're going to do something called flanges, and flanges are basically connectors between the supports and allows them to basically be disassembled into pieces, and these are, work very similarly to these, you just click there and it will be added, like that. So now basically it will in game, when we, once we freeze this it will show that there. What, what about we just quickly set the colours of this, I'm going to set the supports to be kind of a darkish colour, track to be kind of a lightish blue. There we go.
So that's one support type. Now we need to do another support type for when it kind of gets banked. And the reason we're only creating one is because we can copy and paste, and I'll show you how to do that later. So now we need to do one that's banked at 90 degrees, so we'll do one there. And now we're going to be using another type of node. It's called the free node. So basically all you have to do is click on this to make it so it'll be the same level. Then you click on free node. And this node is basically which a node which can be placed anywhere. It doesn't have to be connected to anything, it just can be placed anywhere. So you kind of want to place it so it kind of lines up with this perfectly. And you click on beam. Add beam and you add a beam between it. Now this basically adds an extension or extension to it so we can expand onto it using another beam node like that. So what we're, we're going to do now is going to place some footers like that and that. Again line up. And we're going to do what we kind of did with the A-frame. We're going to put a support coming down. We're going to put a beam node. Put a support coming out. And then we're going to add some flanges. Okay, there we go. Not so hard. Now usually there aren't supports that go directly upside down. But if you wish to do a support that goes directly upside down, you do basically the same thing as this. Except for slightly modified, so I'll show you that now. Let's say we want to put support right here, right at the top of this loop. So we just go do the same thing we did with the free node, except for slightly differently. We'd go into the front view. We place a node right above it, like that. Same kind of thing, but just at a different angle. Make sure it's directly on top. Then add one off to the side, like that. So it kind of makes this L shape. Oops, I've placed an extra one. Like that. And then connect them with beams. Now, usually um, companies won't put them at the top here, but the only companies I've ever seen do this are Gerslauer and maybe a few others, but anyway. Same thing, add a beam node, add a footer, that and that. Then go over. Make sure that the footers don't get too close to the actual ride. So I'm going to kind of separate this one off of it and move that over with it. Then you connect them with beams, just like the other ones. And add the flanges. See? Not too hard. And now we've created three types of supports. We can copy and paste them. So what we have to do is select, the, select an area, click copy, and then place them in the areas where it like kind of needs them, so like there, put one here, do there, 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 there. Now make sure so it doesn't look too repetitive to kind of move these in a little bit. Sometimes move them in and out depending on the size. So it doesn't look like we've just copied and pasted a ton of them. It also makes it look a bit more professional, I noticed. So we can put one here. But because we need to make it a bit further out like that. Then we could copy that one, and we could use it in other places. There, and there. And let's say this is getting in the way of the track, we could just move it over to the other side. Like that. Really easy, really. Custom supporting is very handy and makes your rides look much more professional, so I recommend you try and do it as much as you can. So I'm just going to copy again. Paste a few more. This curve, maybe. Actually, we're going to use the other type on the curve. Hmm. It is okay to use custom supports in some places, just not everywhere. Now, sometimes your custom supports will do this. All you have to do to fix this is to just go into top view and drag these until they're kind of vertical again and line up properly. And then you can copy and paste that. And it's because it kind of does it relative to the node rather than other things. So here we are, we've got that. Now we'll need one that's kind of an another kind of A-frame one here. So we're just going to paste one here. Then we're going to take these and drag them kind of out like that. And then move this one in and move the, all the way to the front there. You see we've got perfect little A-frame there. Now with the banked ones, they will kind of glitch out if you use them in the wrong direction. So watch out for that. I'm just going to paste another one here. There you go. You see it has gone a little bit what odd. 
but that should not affect it too much. We can change that so it doesn't do that so much. Maybe like that. There. Now I'm going to save this because custom supporting takes literal eternities and I don't want to lose all this work. So make sure you save at the same time. This one I'm talking about with bank support, sometimes they'll do this. All you have to do is just move it to the other side, move this into the middle, and move that onto the other side. And that should fix it. So just copy the new the new one and then just use that for those kind of terms. Then I'm gonna use this up there. We go. Just this terrain a little bit so we can have some space for the ride. Kind of dip in. Custom supporting it. Yeah, I think I've I've tried as hard as I can to make this as understandable as possible. If you still don't understand, feel free to send me a PM. I'm I don't bite, I just like to help you guys. That's why I'm making these tutorials in the first place. So if you're still stuck, don't hesitate, just send me a PM. And I'll gladly help you. Or just leave a comment in this video. We are, we're just finishing up the supporting now. That, there we go, all around this curve. And then maybe I should show you how to do one more type of support, which is really easy, it's just a vertical one. All you do is place down a co track connector and your footer, and then you just connect them with a beam. Really simple. Now for the lift of this ride, it's going to be a little bit difficult, so I recommend that maybe I should... If you, you should try and get the hang of this before you try and do the lift supports because those are quite complicated and take a while of tweaking. Anyway, let's see what kind of supports we've got so far on this. I notice I've got a few supports I've still got to add in, but, you know. Sorry about that, I just have to mute, mute my mic while I had a coughing fit because, well, not a coughing fit, it's just, eh, spring. <laughs> anyway. Back to this, let's see how they look in the editor or simulator. See here we got some nice supports. The only thing that's lacking is maybe one here and one up here. Now if you don't know where to add a support, just add one where you think it would be logical. Like where like why would you think you'd have one there because it's under supported like right here would be a good place because it exerts a lot of force on that curve. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and Put one on right now. Oops, I use the wrong support type. Oh yeah, another note is when copying and pasting, you can only use one rail connector per copy and paste. Otherwise the program gets confused and tells you you can't. Okay, so let's start on the lift support. Now the way these are going to work is slightly different. What we're going to do is we're going to place a um, two free nodes at the top, three meters apart, actually two meters apart like this, and all the way down at the bottom right underneath we're going to place some footers. And then you can see we've got this kind of lineup thing here. So now we're going to go to the supports panel. We're going to change the beam type to custom box beam and make it 1.5 or 0.15. There we go. And then we're going to connect these up. That. There we go. We've got kind of this shape. 
Now the next thing we need to do is we need to, every two meters down, we need to place some beam nodes on either side. This may be a little tedious, but remember, nothing is as tedious as entire in supporting by hand an entire wooden coaster, which I would recommend you do once and once only because it's it just kills you. It's the equivalent of running a marathon and no limits. Anyway, all the way down like that. Next, what you want to do is you want to connect those with beams, so you have all these kind of horizontally running things like this next. Then you want to connect them diagonally like this. Now we want to check and see if we've done this right by freezing the ride. So just check on that other support we made too. So there we go, that's what it should look like right now. It should look like kind of a half Kind of support, lift support. Now what we want to do is we want to use the copy and paste tool by going into the top view, selecting it, moving it over so it's like well, exactly one meter to the side of the track. Go to element, we want to support, copy, go here and paste it. Now you'll notice the newly pasted support is slightly lower than our original and that's just I don't know why that happens so all you have to do is just click it and raise it up like that not too hard is it now we've got two identically running things now as you probably guessed we're gonna connect these hooray I recommend you do this in um this mode because it makes it much easier because in the other mode, you could get confused very easily. So there we go, it goes down. Down, down, down. Right down to the bottom. The other side, you just do the same. Up, and up, and up. Now, oh yeah, well, now all that's left to do is to um connect these up. What to do is do oh yeah, we forgot to support a little section of the track. Oops. Someone probably already commented that. There we go. Finish that. So now we're going to do um another rail connector. We're going to do one just here. Then we're going to kind of do a few up the lift like this. Make sure they're kind of in line. And then on the drop, just add a few. I'm adding beam nodes now for some reason. There we go. And then one in the beginning of the tri track. Now we're going to go here and we're just going to change this to 1.0. So just delete the fire. And then we're just going to do some attaching like this. We're going to take the four closest ones. And you're going to make a kind of trying, kind of pyramid attachment out of it to attach them together. Not well, except for the top one, of course, because the top one may not work too well. Now, on the ones going down, you just do the same thing. And there we go, that's our lift supports done. Just save that and freeze it, of course. 
And then I think we're almost ready to call this a time. Wow, I think this has been over an hour long already. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to put some parts in where you guys can skip. Because this is going to take an eternity. There you go. Our lift support. Now let's take a ride on this thing. And then I'll see you guys later. Remember to leave a comment of what you'd like to see in the next episode of this tutorial series. And I have an idea for another series of... Maybe some time lapses I have that you guys may want to see. So if you'd like to see those or anything else or have any questions, just comment and I will probably answer them. So thank you and have a wonderful day. Well, looks like we ran into an issue. So before we go, I'm just going to quickly fix this issue. You shouldn't have this issue because it's probably something I've screwed up. Let's see, what have I done wrong? Ah, oh, yes. Forgot to enable this. There we go. Okay. I'll just skip to that part real quick and I'll let you see the end of the ride. Sorry about that. Kind of ruined the ending, didn't I? Oh well. Maybe next time I actually have an idea, I could do an episode on environments because... That's kind of important. We go skip to that. Da, da, da. Yes, it goes up there. Wait, it's like we it goes up. It's like OMG. Ah, we're going down and we're upside down and we go over there and we go over here. Here we are. Now we go. Oh, clip through the roof a bit. Oh well. There we go. Down there into the brakes. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.